Hey traders, Jason from Lever Brothers. I hope you're well. If you're not on lockdown, I hope you get outside and get some fresh air. Don't stay cooped up inside. It's not good for you. Um, in last weekend's video, I showed all the bear markets going back to 1980. Uh, I showed the structure and nature of each bottom, and I noted how long the recoveries were. Um, here's a summary of that. Let's quickly go through it. So what I noted is that when you have uh, you know, a pretty rank and file bear market, a bear market is defined by a 20% drop. So here we had a 20% drop in 1990, only took seven months to recover, 98 21% drop, four to five months to recover. 2011, 10 months to recover. Too many drops, neither one a bear market, but close enough, we'll count them. 2015, 16, 12 months to recover. And then most recently, uh, 2018, exactly a 20% drop and it took eight months to recover. But when you have something more than just a 20% drop, and that's kind of a that by this by itself is kind of interesting because a bear market is defined as a 20% drop and look look at all the 20% drops that literally just stop right at 20% and bounced you know you can imagine all those people who have you know stops at the 20% level and they get stopped out exactly the wrong time uh, but anyways 20% drops they take you know anywhere from 4 to 5 months up to a year to recover no big deal 87 we had a 30% drop 35% drop and it took 2 years to recover we have the dot com implosion, 50% drop, seven to eight years to recover, financial crisis, bigger drop, 5.5 years to recover. And now we have, and this was not last week's number, this number actually right now, I could like cross this out here, this number right now is like 32, 32% after last week's loss. So the point I tried to make last week is that if you get a 20% drop and that's it, you know, you're looking at six to 12 months to recover, no big deal. If you get a bigger drop than that, you're, then you're gonna measure, you know, and we're wondering right here, what's this number gonna be? How long is it gonna take to recover? And because this number over here, um, I don't know if I get right here, because this number over here is 32, um, this number over here is likely to be measured in years, not in months, okay? And that's the point I tried to make last week. So this week, I wanna, I have a little bit more evidence that um, what has happened over the last month is probably not enough. I mean, I'm seeing evidence that what happened over the last month is probably just the beginning of a bottoming process. And the beginning of a bottoming process, it could last another six or eight months, and it could also go down quite a bit more. Okay, that this, that what that is what has happened recently is just the first really intense leg down. And even though you could put up certain breath indicators and say, and argue that, you know, hey, we're oversold, we should bounce. That's it. That's all the damage that's going to be done. There's actually evidence that says like this is just the the, the first part. Okay, so let's go through some charts here. Um, all right, so what we're looking at here, this is the um, SP 500 up top. What you have down here is the Rock One ROC is rate of change, so it tells you what the market does day to day. Okay, so for example, on this particular day, the market was up like 4.5%, on this particular day it was down 3%, on this day it was up 4%, on this day it was down you know, almost 8%. And you can see a lot of up and down movement here. Okay, so you know, volatility is really high. You're getting, you know, every single day we're getting like th four or 5% moves, um, big moves in both directions. Um, but the market is generally is obviously moving down. But visually, it looks like you know the bulls and the bears are both taking their turns and getting equal stabs um, at each other. But if I let's go to the next chart here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade out those up and downs, and I'm going to put a five um, a five moving average on it. You can see over here. So now what you see here is you see even though it looked visually like there was some up and down movement here and like the bulls and the bears were both taking turns, you put a five moving average on it and what you see is you see a couple weeks of like steady domination by the bears, okay? It turns out that this pattern, this structure appears at the beginning of a lot of bottoming processes, but the bottom, but it's literally just the beginning and then there's months to go. So I'm gonna show you some of those, okay? So this is the current position. Remember, we have steadily, steady domination by the bears over the bulls. All right, next chart, this is, this is gonna be the financial crisis, the beginning of the bottoming pro process in the financial crisis, okay? So over here in October, you see 
high prints, you see low prints. Okay, so we're gonna get some big, big prints in both directions. You know, here we got like plus whatever that is, four percent. Here we got a plus eleven percent. Down over here we got like minus seven percent, minus nine percent. Over here we got minus nine percent. So it looks visually like the bulls and the bears are both kind of duking it out. But if you fade that out and put a moving average on it, you see the same setup here, where it, even though the bulls and the bears are kind of going back and forth, actually, if you look below, beneath the surface, the bears are actually dominating. And what happened is this is just the beginning. This, this shows you that it's not a rank and file pullback within an uptrend. It shows you that there's something actually wrong with the market. So what happened was that was just this first leg down. You had another bottom, another bounce, new low and then it was still months over here and then the market didn't even bottom until you know this is february here and then march goes here market didn't even bottom until well into you know like march 9th okay so this pattern here was just the beginning of a bottoming process that still took another five months and still got lower lows All right now let's go back to the dot-com bubble time here is, so this is going to be 2002, 2003. Here's where the calendar shifts over. Again, you see this really intense move down. You see wild swings here, volatility is high, big up days, big down days. They, they, it, they seem like they're, the bulls and the bears are just kind of going at it. But when you fade it out, fade out the daily prints, and you just put a, a five moving average on it, you again, you see the same pattern that like in the first big intense move down, you get domination by the bears and that is not the bottom. This actually took another like eight months of basing in order for a bottom to actually form. Okay, so if I were to like sum these up and put them all in the same chart, again, 2003, you had that was just simply the was coincided with the first big huge leg down or not the first big but like the leg that led to the base but then it was months eight months of going sideways in a big range before the bottom formed 2008 2009 domination by the bears coincided with this and then you still had another low and then you still had five more months and you know at least another low over here before the bottom formed now today Again, domination by the bears to coincide with this. And going forward, I think, you know, if, if history, you know, to, to look at these charts and assume that it's going to match, you can't do that. But when something acts so negatively, you have to conclude that something's wrong, that it's not just a normal rank and file pullback. It's not a normal bear market there's something wrong with the market and because there's something wrong, it's going to take time to fix. Um, so we're talking like, you know, this could go a couple months, several months, well into the summer, into the fall. And we definitely could head lower before a bottom forms. Personally, I mean, bias has to be to the downside. It's been to the downside um, for most of the last four weeks. I personally went to cash in my trading account on this day, partly by design, partly luck. The market gapped down that Monday after and I was happily in cash. Um, so I've been watching, you know, my, my trading account hasn't suffered at all. Um, but if you're looking like, hey, if we can get a bounce, if we can get a treatment for the coronavirus, if the government can start sending out checks, I mean, I guess all that stuff's gonna help. Um, but I think enough damage has been done. We've crossed a threshold that we're probably looking at months of sideways and probably down before we can really put in a bottom and uh, and start moving up again. All right. Um, so I guess that's it. Um, you know, be flexible, be open-minded. Got to pay attention to the news a little bit because you want to know how the market acts around the news. If the market moves up on bad news, that's actually a good sign. Um, but stay well out there. I guess stay home, get out for a walk, something, get outside, get some fresh air. Um, thanks for listening. You can follow my YouTube channel right here by clicking uh, the red subscribe button. And uh, while you're sitting at home, take my mini masterclass in trading. It's free. There's a link below. All right. See you next time.